elements we know the big picture of the control system so we have four elements in control system we have model stability analysis and design all the first three components are useful to get the last one which is a design so we will concentrate on design what is the purpose of it now if the system is unstable then a compensator or controller is required to make it stable and to achieve a desired performance similarly even if the system is stable also required uh, com compensators and controllers uh, to achieve the desired response of the system now let us look at what are the compensators available basically compensator is an electrical network so which adds a finite pole or finite zero to the system so that the system performance is changed according to the requirement by adjusting the poles and zeros of the system compensator system now there are three types of compensator system generally available we have lead compensator lag compensator and lag lead compensator the other possibility is also there lead lag compensator which is not so famous now there is another type of classification of controllers based on the placement of the compensator so if you look at here the first one is the compensator is placed in series with the plant therefore it is called series compensation then if you look at the other one where we use the compensator in a uh, feedback therefore it is called a feedback compensation now so lead compensator what is basically a lead compensator the lead compensator transfer function uh, goes like this so gc of s is equal to s plus 1 by 2 over s plus 1 by alpha 2 where alpha is less than 1 and 2 is greater than 0 now I can simplify it by taking alpha common so it will be alpha into 1 plus s tau so over we have 1 plus alpha tau s then we locate poles and zeros in s plane the s plane is look like this so in s plane if you locate the initially you will have a zero that is uh, I have a minus 1 by 2 then we have an, I have pole the pole is minus 1 by alpha tau so in this particular s plane since the zero is nearer to the imaginary axis then we can say it is a lead compensator now so what is the realization of the lead compensator using electrical network we can realize very easily now look at the circuit for the lead compensator we have two resistors r1 and r2 and there is a capacitor connected parallel to the r1 and this is input voltage and output we can take it the resistor r2 now we can derive the transfer function we already defined the transfer function we will derive the transfer function we will see what will be the term constant and what will be the alpha value now it is very simple a single loop network and this we can take it as z2 this combination parallel combination is z1 the transfer function v2 by v1 or v2 of s by vn of s is going to be z2 by z1 plus z2 then directly i can substitute here z2 is r2 i will divide it by i have r2 plus and the z1 is a parallel combination of r1 and c so that we can write it very easily here then we can rearrange the terms by uh, doing so then we will be getting the transfer function in the form of gc of s is equal to we have r1 over r1 plus r2 into r1 cs plus 1 again so in the denominator we have r1 r2 c by again r1 plus r2 s plus 1 now I can compare this with the actual uh, transfer function what we defined for the lead compensator and we can write it as GC of S is equal to so we have alpha let us take this combination is R1 by R1 plus R2 is alpha alpha into 1 plus tau over 1 plus alpha tau S yes. now what will be the tau value the tau is going to be R1 C so the parallel combination of resistor and capacitor will be the uh, the product will be the time constant for this particular case then what is the alpha value alpha is r2 by r1 plus r2 it is obvious that it's r2 by r1 plus r2 will be less than 1 so it, since this is less than 1 we call it as lead compensator because if that is the case uh, where i am getting the zero nearer to the imaginary axis so given the time constant and also given the alpha value then we need to design what will be the r value r1 value r2 value c value when you design the lead compensator again so i want to get the frequency response of this what will be the frequency response 
now we have already alpha now uh, first of all i need to compensate this alpha alpha is less than 1 which means the output is going to be attenuated so i need to compensate that by introducing the amplifier where the amplifier gain a is 1 by alpha therefore whatever the output were expected that you are getting with the help of the amplifier now the sinusoidal transfer function of it gc of j omega we can substitute s is equal j omega in the transfer function one plus s tau now it is going to be 1 plus j omega tau divided by 1 plus j alpha omega tau where alpha is less than 1 as we know now when you draw the frequency response that is your body diagram both magnitude plot as well as the phase plot and it is very clear from the magnitude plot we have two corner frequencies the first corner frequency is 1 by 2 the next corner frequency is 1 by alpha 2 so it is a type 0 system we know that uh, the initially we have a 0 db for decade and since at 1 by alpha we have a 0 therefore it goes the plus 20 db for decade then after that, there is a pole therefore again it contributes minus 20 plus 20 minus 20 is 0 therefore again you will get a straight line which is parallel to the x axis 0 db for decade so this will be the uh, magnitude plot for the lead compensator when you look at the phase plot, the phase plot again when omega is 0, it starts from 0, when omega infinity again it goes to 0 because number of poles, number of zeros is 0. So minus 90 minus p minus z is going to be 0. But in between how the phase uh, plot is, so it increases and goes to the maximum value, again it decreases. So this characteristic is very important for me because in a system, uh, there are certain range of frequencies where my phase angle is going down. So wherever the phase angle is going down, so there I can introduce this lead compensator and at that particular frequency then I can introduce this lead. So when introduce this lead and that phase angle is going to be compensated. So what is important in this phase plot is where the maximum phase is going to get. So maximum phase is going to get at one frequency which is omega m and what is the corresponding phase the corresponding phase is phi m which is the maximum phase of the uh, lead compensator these two are very important at what point we want the maximum lead at what frequency and also how much phase lead that it can provide so these two informations are important and also at omega m if you look at what will be the magnitude it is going to be 10 log 1 by alpha where the maximum magnitude that is going to be 20 log 1 by alpha now, so there is a requirement to uh, find these two omega m and phi m. Let us see how to find it. So, you write the phase angle expression as phi is equal to tan, in, tan inverse omega t minus tan inverse alpha omega t. Then you apply tan both sides, you will be getting as tan phi as omega tau 1 minus alpha by 1, mi 1 plus alpha omega square tau square. Now, I want the maximum phase angle, therefore, you apply. Uh, the first derivative so d tan phi by d omega equated to 0 and if you derive the things and like this then you will be getting it as omega m is 1 by 2 1 by 2 root alpha then i can write it as omega m square omega m square is 1 by 2 into 1 by alpha 2 so 1 by 2 is a one corner frequency 1 by alpha 2 is another corner frequency therefore the omega m is the geometric mean of two corner frequencies now similarly I can also find out the omega m value so tan phi m if you apply that in that expression wherever the omega is there if you apply that uh, uh, omega m then you will be getting the tan phi like this and you can write the sin phi also the sin phi m is 1 minus alpha by 1 plus alpha. So we can also find out what will be the alpha value for a given sin phi because that is a reverse case because we know what is the sin phi sin phi m then we need to find the alpha value from alpha i can go back to the r1 r2 and c so alpha is going to be 1 plus 1 minus sin phi m by 1 plus sin phi m so this way we can find out the alpha similarly we can derive the magnitude also we can substitute the omega is equal to omega m in the magnitude expression we can get uh, we already seen that it is going to be 10 log 1 by alpha then what are the effects of lead compensator in system First look at what are the advantages with the lead compensator. The lead compensator basically a high pass filter. Therefore the bandwidth of the system increases. And we know that when bandwidth increases, the rise time of system also increases and it gives very good transient response. 
if any system having very poor transient response then i can use lead compensate to that i can improve my uh, transient response levels similarly a lead compensator improves the damping of the system and all the uh, settling uh, also it improves means uh, it gives very less settling time and the lead compensator improves the phase margin and also gain margin of the system which means uh, the relative stability of the system also increases a lead compensator is just similar to your pd controller when it comes to the uh, controller concept uh, what are the drawbacks of uh, pd uh, pd controller that is a lead compensator so as we know the bandwidth is more so there is more noise enter into the system therefore noise signal to noise ratio becomes very very poor in this system similarly in lead compensator we need to require extra amplifier because i need to compensate that attenuation factor alpha by introducing amplifier so it needs cost and space of the uh, system uh, the maximum phase lead that is available for this feed is 60 degrees if you want to go beyond that then i need to have the multiples a series of uh, compensators so multi sectioned compensators are needed for the lead compensators